Excellent. Thank you, Teresa. And thanks, everyone, for taking some time this afternoon to join us. I'm very excited for the discussion today. Um, obviously, Medicare has recently published the final rule related to episode payment models uh, and specifically focusing in on cardiac rehab uh, incentive program. Uh, we know that the, uh, the landscape is changing and that change is accelerating. So we're excited to partner with uh, MedAxiom member organizations and corporate partners like Moving Analytics to develop new strategies to really transform the way that we deliver care uh, and, and deliver new strategies to be successful moving forward. We've got a great panel uh, to uh, present the content this afternoon, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it off. I'm excited to introduce uh, Dr. DeBus. Uh, he's the founder and former director of the Stanford Rehabilitation Program. He's going to provide us some great insights and learnings uh, around the program that he helped to develop. Uh, Dr. DeBusk, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Ryan. Poll question one is, why are you interested in strategies to increase cardiac rehab participation? Perfect. So take a few moments to uh, answer the question that you see on the screen. I think this is a great opportunity to kick off the conversation uh, for our member organizations and give us context to all the participants. All right, can we post the uh, the results? So it looks like, Dr. DeBusk, about a third of our groups or attendees on the call were selected for cardiac um, uh, rehab incentive programs. Um, and then we also have uh, those who are focused on and, and really centered around reducing um, readmissions. Um, interesting distribution here. More than half of the participants uh, are in one of those two categories. Cool question number two. What tools or approaches are you intending to use to avoid costs in the 90-day bundle? Perfect. Again, take a moment to uh, respond to the question. We'll be sharing the results here momentarily. All right, can we share the responses? So it looks as though more than half of the uh, respondents identified cardiac rehab. And we'll be talking today about how techniques for care management can be folded into cardiac rehab. The cardiac bundle announcement provides a historic opportunity for cardiac rehabilitation programs to achieve three goals, to expand their scope of practice, enhance the volume of patients they serve, and strengthen their financial standing. The requirements of the cardiac bundle are to deliver care below the target price, follow patients for 90 days post-discharge, achieve quality measures, and avoid unnecessary readmissions and ED visits. Gaps in care coordination presently exist. The three silos of care from which healthcare is, is delivered are functionally disconnected at present. The emergency department, the outpatient clinic, and the hospital. The care provided within each silo may be superlative, but prompt and effective communication between silos is generally inadequate, and contact directly by telephone is not even in this diagram.
An example of the present situation is that of every 100 patients reporting chest pain in ED settings, roughly half are discharged home, judged to be at low risk. Among the 50 hospitalized, only 10 have an acute MI. 40 could be advised to stay home if there had been provision for telephone triage. The consequences of the system is churning 100 patients in order to identify 10, with half of those experiencing chest pain hospitalized. Telephone triage presents an opportunity to make great improvements in this situation with fewer ED visits and more same-day clinic and follow-up calls as an alternative. So standard telephone protocols can safely identify the low-risk patients. In the era of bundled payments, cardiac rehab, rehab personnel are skilled in coordinating care in the 90-day period post-discharge. However, fewer than 20% of patients participate in cardiac rehab. Patients do not initiate cardiac rehab in a timely fashion, often many weeks after the initial ER or hospitalization. And Cardiac rehab services presently do not focus on reducing unnecessary ED visits or readmissions, for example, through effective telephone triage. Today, we're talking about the evolution of cardiac rehabilitation to include care coordination. New approaches are needed to increase the reach of the cardiac rehab, including home-based and hybrid models of cardiac rehab. Cardiac rehab staff need new training and tools to coordinate the care with physicians located in ED, hospital, and clinic settings. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Nancy Miller, uh, who has been uh, for more than 30 years the nurse care manager uh, at the Stanford Cardiac Rehab, uh, who is presently uh, working with Moving Analytics to implement the tools that have been developed uh, that have improved upon the multi-fit program that came out of that 30-year program of research. Nancy? Thank you, Bob. And indeed, it's a pleasure to um, be speaking with you um, this morning and this afternoon. Uh, I think our first um, goal is to answer about three more questions. And so the next question relates to how many people in the audience have a cardiac rehabilitation program? Again, please take a moment and uh, fill out the question on your screen. And it looks like we've got the response. Can you post the answers? Wow, so overwhelmingly, it looks like 91% of respondents do have a cardiac rehab program. Excellent. So the next question is, how, uh, what percent of your patients participate in cardiac rehabilitation? Excellent. Can we post the results? Interesting. So it looks like the majority of respondents report less than half. Right, Ryan. And I think this follows national guidelines for which, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of patients actually that are uh, actually enter cardiac rehab. So I'm not surprised to actually see the result there. The third question is, how familiar are you with home-based cardiac rehabilitation approaches? All right, looks like um, the answers are in. Can we post the results? 
So you can see we've got a, a pretty, uh, pretty diverse mix of responses here. Exactly. So I think um, uh, it, it's important to, to recognize that there are, there are many ways to do things and to try and extend cardiac rehabilitation to a larger number of patients. Uh, one way to do this is to consider um, the value of care management in that effort. And the Cardiovascular Research Roundtable in 2013, I think, developed one of the best uh, definitions of care management, which really means um, that people are addressing the clinical and non-clinical needs of cardiovascular patients in order to improve long-term outcomes and reduce avoidable costs and utilization. And care management, as we know the term, is really includes the elements of case management, which is coordinating primarily in services during the inpatient stay. But care management, in my mind, really extends to the outpatient setting to include not only the psychosocial support and connections to community-based resources, but the medical oversight that patients need um, as they transition from the inpatient to the outpatient setting. So when we begin to talk about what is home-based cardiac rehab, um, I think the inclusion criteria are very similar to the eligible for patients that are, that are eligible for traditional cardiac rehab, and that includes um, low to moderate risk patients that have suffered an acute myocardial infarction or gone through bypass surgery or PCI. Um, the duration is, is 90 days, and the goal is obviously for all of you that um, are involved in rehab is to improve not only functional capacity, but um, risk factor management and quality of life, as well as more recently to try and reduce readmissions and hospitalizations, not only for CAD, but for all causes. When we begin to think about the components of home rehabilitation, we actually have to think about a structured program similar to the way in which uh, rehab is structured in a facility. And that means that there is really a personalized care plan that is updated and reviewed by a physician. Um, in most cases, there will be structured telephone calls in order to um, coach patients on how well they're doing with cardiovascular risk factor modification. And an important aspect is that patients have, have contact, as uh, Dr. DeBus mentioned earlier, with an RN, especially in the case of a change in signs and symptoms. And this is normally during working hours between eight and six. But the ultimate goals, as I've mentioned, are not only to provide surveillance, but also to optimize medications and to ensure that patients are adhering to secondary prevention medications that are so important in terms of their overall outcomes. Finally, that we are generating reports to hospital staff, um, physicians, nurses, and others who are caring for the patient um, in the course of 90 days. The framework that we actually developed at Stanford when we began to do home rehabilitation, which I have to say was in the early 1980s, was to ensure that there was a care manager at the um, cornerstone of care, and everything was facilitated primarily by telephone. So the nurse care manager had access to the cardiologist and any of the specialty physicians, um, whether it be an ED physician or another cardiologist primarily by phone. She also then um, actually uh, was in communication with the primary care physician by telephone and through developing computer-generated reports to the primary care doc. And more recently, when we've been able to uh, ensure um, adequate uh, management by having a care dashboard, um, that enables um, nurses and patients to communicate not only by telephone, but through a mobile app um, and the use of the dashboard. So I think technology and now and in the near future will enhance the way in which home rehabilitation is delivered uh, in the near future. 
what are the resources that are required to um, really to initiate and extend um, formal cardiac rehab to um, a, a large larger number of patients? Well, we believe that we obviously have to have a medical director, that an RN care manager or coach is important, and that a program assistant can certainly um, add value to the team. Um, the care management system is really an electronic system, as I mentioned, that administers care plans, communicates with patients, and tracks important vital signs and symptoms, as well as adherence, and also ensures the scheduling of appointments for patients. Then patients can be at home, essentially exercising and undertaking risk factor management, utilizing many devices such as, as scales, fitness trackers, um, automated blood pressure cuffs, and so forth. And of course, it's critically important that we have the educational materials that are needed to help people to self-manage risk factors and to ensure that they um, understand the importance of secondary prevention agents, um, such as the pharmacotherapies, um, critical to outcomes. Next slide. When we began to think, uh, to think about staffing and how many patients uh, can be handled by a full-time equivalent, it turns out that a physician that provides medical oversight and approved care plans can see about 300 patients at 0.1 FTE. A full-time care manager can handle about 300 patients over the course of a year. And a half-time program assistant who can help with scheduling, doing a lot of the non-clinical follow-up and program administration can support the care manager and by following at least 300 patients. So um, a small staff can actually handle a fairly large number of patients that are gonna be involved in home cardiac rehabilitation. So what do we know about the success and the evidence for home-based rehab? Well, this is a Cochrane review that was published in 2015, looking at 17 randomized controlled trials of about 2,000 patients in which it was found that both home and center-based rehab were equally effective in improving clinical and health-related quality of life outcomes. And our first trial that was actually published in the 1980s actually was uh, showed uh, as well that we could get equivalent outcomes in relationship to functional capacity and risk factor management in those that were involved in home rehab. So I think there is evidence um, in the literature. What do we know about the evolution of home-based rehab? Well, our studies began in the 80s and culminated in, as Bob mentioned, the MultiFit trial, which was a home-based cardiac rehab program um, undertaken in five Kaiser hospitals in, as part of a randomized control trial in 1994 with very um, imp important outcomes or improved outcomes in those involved in home-based training compared to usual care. The results of this particular trial led in 1997, as you see on the lower part of the slide, to the expansion of MultiFit into 20, all 20 hospitals in Northern California and I'm happy to report, it's a researcher's dream to know that your research is continuing 20 years later and serving about 2,000 patients annually within the Kaiser system. The VA um, successfully did a test of home-based rehab in 2012, and as you see to the right of, of the, that box, they have extended home-based rehab now to over 20 sites through the Office of Rural Health. And then we go worldwide, and in Brisbane, Australia, we actually worked with investigators there, and they actually, in a randomized control trial, showed um, how home rehabilitation could be delivered and, and that it was equivalent to center-based rehab in an environment that has a lot of rural patients. Finally, in 2015, um, home rehab was extended to the UK, to Canada, to Singapore, through an effective program that was developed in the UK as an alternative to try and reach a broader group of patients um, uh, through home-based rehab efforts. And I'm happy to report that most recently at Henry Ford in the United States, um, they have successfully uh, obtained reimbursement um, by Blue Cross of Michigan for home rehab. 
And so this is the first time a payer in a very large state um, that has a high rate of cardiovascular disease, um, it has successfully obtained uh, reimbursement. Um, Dr. Eleanor Levin from uh, Santa Clara Kaiser at the American College of Cardiology uh, this year um, published uh, or presented the results of um, an analysis of, of almost 1,500 patients that participated in multi set at the Kaiser Oakland facility. And as you see, the outcomes are quite good in that there is a 95% adherence to beta blockers, 97% uh, of patients not smoking. 85% with blood pressures less than 140 over 90, and, and almost 50% of patients who are exercising at least 150 minutes per week. So um, again, very positive outcomes in terms of risk factor management. In the area of technology, and as we move forward, I think it is important that we really um, try and look at creative ways to uh, not only establish two-way communication, but to remotely monitor pa uh, patients, um, as is the case these days, in terms of their overall health status, their vital signs, and their symptoms. And so we have been working with Moving Analytics to really improve upon the technology um, and to make sure that um, we're continuing to not only collect data, but enable patients to easily uh, monitor themselves through the use of apps and uh, a dashboard um, for the uh, care managers. So um, with that in mind, I want to turn the um, podium over to um, Ade, who essentially, Adesani, who is one of the co-founders of Moving Analytics. And we will um, hear from him about a little bit about technology. Thank you, Nancy. Hello, everybody. Okay, we're having a problem okay. hearing you. Can you hear okay? I think we can hear you now, maybe. Okay. Is this, is this there we go. Okay. So I just said thank you, Nancy, no. for that for that introduction. So very quickly, I just wanted to um, introduce you to Moving Analytics. What we do is we help hospitals implement virtual care management programs for chronic conditions. And there's three main things that we provide to our hospital partners. The first is a, um, a library of validated care management programs that came out of Nancy and Dr. Dubois work at Stanford. So this includes patient education materials, healthcare provider training manuals, and decision support tools. Um, the second thing we provide is a virtual care management system. So this is a technology platform for the care managers and the hospital staff to actually coordinate care and manage patients. It also includes a mobile application for patients. And the third bucket of services we provide is all the advisory and implementation support services you need from program design. We can work with you to design a program from the ground up to training your staff and helping you on the financial and reimbursement side of how to make this work financially for you. Um, there's two ways we can integrate what we do into your current workflows, and that's through the hybrid cardiac rehab model and the remote cardiac rehab model. Um, and to explain this further, I'm going to introduce um, Marianne Classic Wallace at Lord's Health System to um, share her experience with the mobile cardiac rehab program. Thank you, Ade. Um, this is Marianne Classic Wallace. Um, I appreciate everybody's time this afternoon. Um, I'd like to explain to you what we did at our facility, um, which is located in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, a short drive um, from our hospital. Um, our hospital is located in Camden, New Jersey. And we are um, renowned in the area for our uh, cardiac accomplishments. We have a very robust program. Um, you can see on your screen, I'm, I'm not boasting, I'm just stating fact, but we're good at what we do. And we're so good at what we do that we have a lot of patients that come out that need cardiac rehab. And um, 
you can see that in 2015, uh, we, we had increased our, um, our open heart surgery to um, 820 cases um, that were located in the Philadelphia area. And we have 27% of the market share. And we uh, compete against the hospital that's right down the street from us as well as Philadelphia hospitals, including um, Penn Presby and the University of Pennsylvania. So because of our very busy cath lab and our, uh, and our busy ORs, we had plenty of patients who needed cardiac rehab. We had opened up a brand new freestanding um, center in Cherry Hill in 2013. And almost immediately upon opening the doors, we found that we were booked up. Uh, there are 82 cardiologists that are located in that building and we had plenty of support and plenty of physicians sending their patients to us, but we had a problem. We had an eight week waiting list for um, program admission. Um, what that results in is um, unhappy physicians, unhappy patients, um, and the staff continually hearing about why can't I get into your program? I wanna get into your program. Um, I have um, some beautiful blueprints of some ideas that we had for expanding our brick and mortar facility to give us a larger footprint in that building, but we were never able to bring any of those changes uh, to fruition. Um, so it was clear that we needed some uh, innovative approach to um, getting the cardiac rehab word out to our patients. Um, we had... Um, Dr. Reg Blaber, who um, was connected with Ade and brought him in and said, let's talk about this and see if we can implement this here at Lourdes. And um, recently we were featured on a, a local um, news channel in Philadelphia about our program. And I think Ade is gonna share that with you right now. No tech tonight. A hospital in South Jersey is using new technology to help more patients recover after a heart attack or stroke. Health reporter and registered nurse Allie Gorman is at the big board with details. Allie. Hey guys, yeah, we're talking about cardiac rehabilitation. Studies show people who do the rehab after suffering a heart problem are more likely to live longer and healthier lives. So a hospital in South Jersey is making the therapy more convenient. The fitness machines at Lord's Health Cardiac Rehab Center aren't as busy as they used to be. Just as many patients are assigned there, but some can now get their exercise where it suits them best. <laughs> David Bai is one of them. Last year, after heart valve replacement, he and his doctor decided cardiac rehabilitation would be a good idea. I'm going to be exercising to be monitored during that process. But instead of a 36-mile trip each week, Way to the rehab center three times a week by qualified to use MoveIn. It's an app developed by a San Francisco company. The app, along with a fitness tracker on his wrist, help him follow the rehab plan wherever he is. And director of the cardiac rehab center, Marianne Classic Wallace, says they can see everything on their end too. How much they're exercising, um, what their heart rate is. I'm able to exercise at home or at my local gym. If they're not um, attaining their target heart rate, we're advising them to uh, increase their activity. Bai says it also keeps tabs on his medication. Take your pills, you punctually, yes, you hit enter and that gets sent off. The communication through the app is a two-way street. Patients can ask questions or report concerns. And those without a smartphone or tablet can borrow one, along with a blood pressure cuff, fitness tracker, and scale for monitoring. Wallace says about two-thirds of their patients qualify for the program. She hopes it goes nationwide to boost participation. About 20% of eligible patients for cardiac rehab actually attend. So the goal is to get that number up, get more patients doing the therapy. Now, earlier this week, we talked about a study that found many wrist-worn heart monitors are not very accurate. Lord says that they check theirs against the ones in the lab for several sessions before a patient is allowed to use it on their own. Rick and Alicia, back over. So um, to bring you up to date, um, after we instituted our pilot to bring um, moving analytics into our cardiac rehab program, our wait list was reduced to four weeks. 
we had an 80% graduation rate. Uh, there's a 70% increase in functional capacity. Uh, we'll be uh, presenting a poster in Charleston uh, this fall for AACVPR. Uh, my goal, of course, is to expand this program locally, but um, I recognize that this is a message that applies to people all over the United States, um, rural areas, um, congested, populated areas, any place where uh, we can't deliver the cardiac rehab to the degree that we would like to see it done. Um, and so one of our challenges is that we are exploring how we might be able to bill for the program um, with Medicare guidelines. I'd like to uh, turn the podium over to um, Dr. Arash Harzan. Um, Dr. Arash has done some great work um, at Emory and with the VA in Atlanta. Thanks very much, Mary Ann. It's a, a pleasure to be here uh, to share what we uh, hope becomes the next evolution for home-based rehab in the VA. And so um, I don't think I have to sell this audience on the degree to which uh, cardiac rehab remains uh, vastly underutilized uh, with uh, just about 20% of Medicare patients who enroll nationwide. Um, but what we noticed was that uh, there's an even larger disparity uh, amongst veterans uh, who on average tend to enroll uh, about half as frequently as non-veterans, about 10% uh, nationwide. And at our facility in Atlanta, uh, that number was closer to 8%. Um, and there's many reasons for this. Uh, one of the main ones is that um, less than a third of the hospitals actually come uh, with an on-site rehab program. Uh, and so uh, most uh, VA medical centers uh, rely on uh, third-party centers to refer their patients out to. Um, and the, you know, the same barriers that affect non-veterans affect veterans, uh, except they tend to be amplified. Uh, and these include things like just a geographic distance uh, to rehab centers uh, that really tend to affect uh, the tremendous number of rural veterans that we have, uh, as well as the, the high co-pays, uh, which are a challenge for veterans to have uh, that live mostly on fixed incomes. And so uh, we ventured to build uh, a virtual CR program uh, that uh, used the Moving Analytics platform uh, and based on the multi-fit program that uh, we heard about from Nancy and Bob, um, and was delivered by one of our uh, PAs who uh, was half time on the program. She was trained to use the company's platform uh, to monitor patients. She would uh, perform uh, pre scheduled phone visits, uh, and each patient received the Movement app uh, that um, featured daily reminders uh, for them to exercise, take their medications. Uh, There's a health diary, educational videos, uh, secure messaging, and uh, we actually did a complete virtual program, entirely home based. Uh, so we didn't do um, a hybrid model. Uh, so patients came in for baseline exit functional testing and surveys, but in between they were home for 12 weeks uh, doing the program on their own. Uh, and so uh, these are some of the screenshots from the patient facing app and you can see uh, there's a home daily task screen, uh, there's patient reminders, there is a health diary uh, where patients can log uh, exercises including uh, the duration, their peak heart rate, uh, and uh, as well as two-way messaging that they can sort of uh, use to communicate back and forth with the coach. And this gives you sort of a high-level view of the flow of patients through the program. So uh, starting with the initial recruitment, uh, enrollment, and then onboarding of each patient uh, at time zero, uh, who then would progress through a 90-day, 12-week program uh, that includes uh, exercise and includes coaching, uh, structured phone calls, uh, and then monthly, there are patient reports uh, that are generated by the dashboard uh, that our entire team can use and review. Uh, and sort of the key part of the of the entire platform really is the patient dashboard. Uh, and this is really what the, uh, our rehab manager was able to use to get a bird's eye view uh, of the entire cohort, uh, all the way from pre-enrollment um, through the specific outcomes that we were trying to capture uh, and what it probably does the best is it really lets her maximize uh, the time that she spends uh, with patients over the phone uh, instead of rehashing uh, what they've already done, that data is already there. So she's able to really sort of uh, uh, drill down and focus in on uh, specific areas where they have questions or concerns or they're having difficulty exercising. If they really need some extra time talking about uh, smoking cessation, medication management, uh, she can really maximize her time because the platform lets her sort of use her time 
uh, much more efficiently in the way that it presents all the data to her. Uh, so here are just some of the basic clinical results, and this is data from um, a uh, presentation that we gave uh, at this year's uh, Marin College of Cardiology presentation. Um, and what we saw was uh, uh, very significant increases uh, both in exercise capacity as well as blood pressure, and you can see the analysis there. Uh, we had over 90% of patients who remained uh, engaged with the, with the dashboard through the first four weeks, uh, and that level of engagement was sustained uh, through weeks four and weeks 12, uh, with regards to how often they were logging their exercises, uh, logging their blood pressure, uh, as well as entering their weight into the log. Uh, in terms of uh, the outcome, so uh, you can sort of see a pre and a post. Uh, so in terms of enrollment, uh, we went from, uh, like I showed you, less than 10% in Atlanta to over 42%. Uh, so we quadrupled our, uh, the number of patients who are actually uh, entering a rehab program. Uh, we, haven't even, we had an even larger uh, increase in the number of patients who are completing uh, a full 12 week program of any kind. Um, and what we were able to estimate is that we probably spent uh, less than one sixth of the cost uh, on each patient that VA would typically have to spend uh, on one veteran uh, who they would have to outsource uh, to complete a full um, 12 week program, a 36 session program at an outside center because Medi uh, the, the VA tends to um, uh, basically match the rates that Medicare would pay. Uh, to reimburse private cardiac rehab. So it would be the same cost uh, as if Medicare was paying for it. Uh, so looking ahead in the VA, uh, we're actually uh, expanding our program uh, from our home site in Atlanta. Uh, and now we have additional sites coming online in Florida, California, uh, as well as Seattle. And we're in the early planning stages uh, with the Ann Arbor VA in Michigan. Uh, and we're also exploring um, uh, and, and you saw this with, from uh, Mary Ann, but we're looking uh, to explore uh, new ways that we can directly integrate uh, a whole host of sensors um, to both help with data collection and patient engagement uh, and really let us uh, track um, specific metrics like heart rate, uh, actigraphy, um, so we can get more accurate data about how patients are uh, progressing through the program. And so we have our, uh, our last audience poll question. Uh, so, uh, how helpful has this presentation been in helping you prepare for the 90-day bundle? All right, please take a moment to uh, um, complete the poll question. I don't have this question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, then they won't be able to, <laughs> to fill that out. I apologize. Well, we'll, we'll this, this is Ryan Graver. We'll be sending out some follow-up uh, information here and, and certainly uh, look forward to getting feedback from the uh, participants. Um, I'm going to go ahead and transition us here. Um, we have a number of questions that have been posted. I want to take a moment and encourage our participants um, in your control panel, you can post questions. Uh, I can uh, see the questions that you're posting and I will direct them uh, to our various audience or to our various panelists. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to kick us off. The first question that I have here is actually specific to the Lord's uh, cardiac rehab model. And the question is, uh, what's the participation or capture rate uh, in the Lord's cardiac rehab hybrid model? So, um, the participation rate, we have uh, thus far, um, we've seen 15 patients complete our program. In that period of time, uh, we have enrolled over 75 patients in the program. So, um, I guess that's kind of a, a fair number. Um, we're, we're looking at changing the way we deliver the, uh, the product to our patients. And I'm also looking at marketing with the physicians to have them refer patients to us that uh, the younger, healthier uh, MI that um, may not, may be ready to go back to work and um, the physician may not um, really push cardiac rehab with them. So we're actually looking for a much larger um, group of people to participate in the program. Excellent. 
got a number of questions coming in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fire these off. Um, they're not necessarily specifically directed to any of the panelists. I think one of the questions that has come up a number of times is related to reimbursement. And can you please clarify um, how home-based rehab will be reimbursed both under EPM um, and then just in general, if you can address um, home-based cardiac rehab reimbursement. So this is Ade from Regional Analytics. So at the moment, um, home-based cardiac rehab is not reimbursed by Medicare. Or well, Medicare now reimburses for chronic care management and um, that's one thing that we're exploring, you know, incorporating into the program so that hospitals can bill for, you know, everything you're doing um, through the chronic care management codes. So that's one option for reimbursement. Now, as far as the bundle itself, I think depending on which of the models that you fall into, if you're in the bundle alone um, by itself, the goal there obviously is to reduce 90 day readmissions and, you know, um, reimbursement isn't um, as critical as it would be because the pay of, um, for cost avoidance will be greater than whatever reimbursement there is. Um, but for the hospitals and incentive model, I think when you think of the hybrid model and its ability to attract those patients who usually are on the fence um, and wouldn't come to cardiac rehab because they can make a commitment either in the time per week or the number of um, sessions they need to drive into the cardiac rehab, giving them the opportunity to come in once, um, that can help you attract more patients and drive more volume into your center-based cardiac rehab. So the goal really here is using care management as a framework to engage patients and have them come into as many sessions for the center-based cardiac rehab. So that's, that's the short answer to that question. Perfect. Um... From a uh, cost perspective, so can you speak to the cost uh, to patients, uh, cost to the organization, um, and, and how do you handle things like um, cell phones? Do you actually provide cell phones? And what about cell phone service? So a number of questions have been posted related to the cost specific to the patients, as well as cost to the organizations. Can you speak to that? Yes, so typically we do not charge patients and our relationship is with the hospital and we work out with you what a fair price is. I can tell you that per patient, the cost of the hospital is less than $300 per patient to do the program. Now, as far as the devices like the smartphones or the scales or the, or the tablet, um, we work with you to assess your population and um, determine how many patients may need one of those devices and would purchase uh, a hardware kit for you that includes a tablet that has a 4G internet connection, it has a Fitbit, a blood pressure cuff and a scale, and you can then loan those to patients as needed and have them return it after the 90 day period. And in fact, in our case at uh, Our Lady of Lourdes and Cherry Hill, we had um, purchased 10 kits ahead of time, anticipating that we would be giving, lending these things to our patients when in fact, um, many of them already had these devices uh, available to them. Excellent. Um, and can you touch on how you manage high-risk patients? So at Our Lady of Lourdes in Cherry Hill, we, uh, we only took patients that were low or moderate risk according to AACVPR. We've taken a, we've taken a very conservative approach to this. Um, although I can tell you that um, there have been no differences in the issues between the low and the medium risk patients. Nancy, do you want to speak on that more? I'm sorry, Ade, can you, can you repeat that? Sorry, Ade, what did you say? Yeah. I, I wanted Nancy Miller from our side to speak about that. Certainly, I'm sorry, sorry, Ade. I think, I think what most people don't understand is that close to 80 to 85% of patients are low to moderate risk patients. And even in the, in the day of cardiac rehabilitation now with heart failure patients being eligible for, um, you know, traditional type of cardiac rehabilitation programs, um, many of those patients you know, that are a little bit higher risk can actually um, be provided with walking guidelines and can participate in this kind of an intervention um, 
if they're really closely watched, such as, you know, through an app, that kind of thing. But I think the important thing in this particular model is to recognize that 80 to 85% of patients are low to moderate risk and eligible thus far for, for home training. <clears throat> I'd like to weigh in on uh, that uh, point as well. The high-risk patients, uh, <clears throat> especially when the high risk is on the basis of critical coronary disease, will be undergoing coronary revascularization within a relatively short period of time after their qualifying visit. Uh, somewhat different with uh, the heart failure uh, patients. Uh, when we did a study at Kaiser of heart failure patients, uh, based that was the entry criteria, most of the rehospitalizations that we observed were not for heart failure. They were for arrhythmias, chest pain, and a variety of other issues. And that was a, uh, a surprise to us. So I think the, the risk uh, issue is, uh, is one that's, that's not central because, as Nancy says, most of those individuals are going to be low to moderate risk. Excellent. I'm going to keep moving the questions along. We've got a, quite a number posted here. Uh, Arash, this question is for you. Can you clarify the reduction in cost from 3,000 versus 36, or I'm sorry, 3,000 versus 600? Um, is that based on in-house resources versus patients using outside facilities and reporting data? Can you clarify the numbers? Uh, sh uh, sure, and, and, and that's actually correct, yeah, so the, um, the 3600 is, uh, so if the VA, so our VA does not have uh, an on-site rehab program, so uh, if uh, most of our, or all of our veterans that uh, are going to get referred to cardiac rehab uh, will get uh, what we call feed out, uh, and at this point it's through the choice program um, that I'm sure you've heard about on the news, uh, and um, then uh, the, the VA will pay uh, the rehab centers on their behalf, and they usually match the rates that uh, Medicare would reimburse those sessions for. Uh, and so for for a single patient, assuming they go to 36 sessions, that comes out to about uh, 3,600. Uh, our in-house costs, uh, and these are estimated, uh, but our in-house costs to deliver the program, uh, including uh, the FTE uh, for uh, our rehab coach, uh, other resources, uh, as well as uh, what would be a license that would pay to moving analytics uh, come to about 600. And that's where those numbers come from. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question. Are programs planning to implement home or remote uh, programs for peripheral artery disease patients now that there is a national coverage determination? Yeah, my thoughts on that is that, you know, the, the coverage for PAD was for center-based PAD, um, and it could definitely be done at home, and that's one of the things we're looking at at Moving Analytics is developing a home PAD program. Um, and I think that could also be reimbursed either, you know, by advocating for specific home reimbursement for it, or by using a framework like the chronic care management framework to like, get that reimbursed as well. So, I think that's something that's going to be coming in the future. And, and that's actually an area that um, both at the Atlanta VA uh, and then uh, sort of a sister hospital, uh, which is Grady Memorial, uh, we're looking to expand into uh, uh, as part of our pipeline. So we're actually uh, working on uh, developing a, a home-based PAD program, structured walking as well. Excellent. Thank you. Um, this is a, a good question. In the summary slide, 76% uh, of participants were between the ages of 45 and 64 years old, uh, while 12% were greater than 65 years old. Uh, is there a particular issue with engaging the older age group in the home-based rehab program? Um, and this uh, participant noted that older patients make up the majority of their cardiac population. Um, can you speak to the demographic aspects of home-based cardiac rehab? Nancy, do you want to take this one? Sure. I mean, I, I, in, in the original uh, multi-fit trial, we took patients up to the age, I think, of 85, 80 to 85. And so we recognize that there are going to be a, a fair number of people that are going to be in their 70s and 80s that are exercising, and that, to my knowledge, there were no differences in terms of 
you know, their capability and their and their function and, and their ability to improve in terms of functional capacity and risk factor management than in the younger population. So um, I think it's, 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 you know, we obviously want to do some studies in which we will subset patients based upon age, but um, traditionally many patients have um, uh, have been eligible for home training that are that are um, uh, older adults. This actually is an issue that uh, came up for us at the VA, uh, where uh, we uh, the, the main question or one of the main questions we were getting asked early on was sort of, you know, um, our elder veterans. Uh, are going to be a, able to sort of perform home-based rehab, and then really, um, you know, how are they going to engage with the technology aspect, the smartphones? Uh, and what we saw, so our average age was a little bit older, it was closer to 70, um, and we had half the patients actually come in with their own smartphones, but the other half, and we rolled about 20, uh, were provided one as part of our pilot. Um, and um, the majority of them, over about 75% of them, uh, reported that they felt the smartphone app uh, was easy to use and uh, the numbers that we saw uh, sort of back up the fact that they were really able to engage with the aspects of the, the app, the dashboard, entering their data. Um, so we didn't find that the age to be a, a rate limiting factor uh, and the ability for our program to really help engage patients. Um, thank you. Can, um, can any of the panelists speak to uh, specific data Related to home-based cardiac rehab on um, on the reduction or the the overall impact relative to readmissions. <clears throat> that is a very difficult uh, topic uh, to study, <clears throat> but in our experience, um, in a study conducted at Montreal Heart Institute, uh, we found that uh, patients who were participating were very very much encouraged to during daytime hours uh, in order to receive advice from the nurse care manager and the cardiologist. And, and when they did that, we found that there was a tremendous reduction in ED visits um, in that population, uh, three quarters reduction in what were described as medically unnecessary ED visits. So I think it's important to realize in this context of cardiac rehab and follow-up, it's extremely important for the patient to have that contact with the nurse care manager with the realization that that individual is a known quantity to the cardiac rehab program and the coordinator of that program is in contact with the physicians to help to coordinate the care uh, throughout the week. So we tell patients call early in the day call early in the week, and when they do that, uh, there's a big reduction in ED visits. So that speaks generally to the importance of telephone contact with the patients, irrespective of their goals in physical rehabilitation. That is perceived by patients to be a lifeline, and properly so. Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to try to combine a couple of questions that I think are, are um driving to some of the same specifics. So w one aspect is how do you determine um, which patients do center-based and which do home-based uh, rehab? And then further, once you determine um, which program they're going to follow, do patients have to come into the office to do um, a few supervised sessions before they move into the home-based program? Um, and then sort of lastly, how do you address patients who in particular live very far away? I think the example on the, on the video that you showed, um, how do you get them to enroll in the remote rehab program? So kind of three parts to that question. Yes, yeah, so I, I can take a first, first attempt at that. I think um, to start with, it really depends on what your existing structure is. So if you have a cardiac rehab facility versus if you don't, um, it's a little bit different. Now, for people who have a cardiac rehab facility, um, the idea is that we want to get all the patients um, recruited as early as possible, possibly from their cardiology follow-up. And based on the patient's um, 
ability to come into a physical rehab center, their risk factor and their um, preference use technology, we can place them in either a home track or a hybrid track. So the difference between home and hybrid tracks is that, for example, the people in the hybrid track could come into rehab, let's say three times a week for the first week. And then um, in the following weeks, depending on their schedules on, or their ability to pay for rehab, you can win them off the center-based sessions and have them come in maybe once a week or once every other week. While the patients who live very far away, they will put on the home track where instead of coming into the center, um, your team will be calling them and, you know, there will be structured telephone calls, you know, every week up to 12 weeks. Um, so that's how, you know, we, we stratified this. So I think from a technology perspective, um, giving patients access to take technology or patients access to technology helps you maintain a relationship with the patients. And on a case by case basis, you know, patients can switch between the home program or coming into the center. And that's the whole idea of the hybrid uh, program. Excellent. And I know we're we're at the top of the hour. I think one last question um, uh, was posed. How do we begin? <laughs> how, how does a program start a uh, home-based cardiac rehab program? Is, do they have to invest in software or, or really where do they start? Yeah, so if you contact us at Moving Analytics, there's the email there, info.movinganalytics.com. I would walk with you through a consultation where we assess where you are currently and we work with your clinical team to design a program and we also work out the logistics on payment and reimbursement. And, you know, we can get up to speed in less than a month. So if you reach out to um, info at movinganalytics.com, we can help you. You can also visit, visit the website at movinganalytics.com. Excellent. Well, I want to thank again um, all of our participants. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to, uh, to join us. Uh, thank you to the panelists for sharing your insights, experience, and uh, the data that you've uh, collected. Again, I think this is a, a fascinating topic and one that is going to certainly continue to evolve uh, as we see the Medicare programs uh, begin to roll out. So I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. Again, we'll be sending out follow-up emails uh, with, uh, with copies of the slides, additional resources uh, and information, and we are always here to uh, help answer any additional questions that were not addressed. So thank you all again, and uh, have a wonderful afternoon.